Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, we've got Eric, getmagic.com, Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks. From landopia.com, we've got the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, saving lives and doing deals. Mike, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. It's great to be here. It's great. It's great. Don't forget about the big papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? Doing great. Happy to be on the show. And let's not forget the Six Sigma. You know him. You love him. Scott Todd. ScottTodd.net. LandMoto.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your post, your uh, Craigslist and your Facebook postings, PostingDomination.com forward slash The Land Geek. Uh, today's podcast is sponsored by GeekPay.io. If you haven't sound, signed up for Geek Pay yet, I'm going to raise the price after you listen to the podcast. So do it now. <laughs> Geekpay.io, the only set it and forget it system. Uh, let's just get into it. We got a good topic. We got a good topic. Uh, Scott, tell this story. Okay. So October, uh, October, September 5th, I, well, actually a couple days before that, September 2nd, I mailed a deed to a county that is not on Simply File. So, you know, it's, it's a county that, this is one of the reasons why I don't like to do uh, counties in, that aren't on Simply File, but I mailed it to them because I bought a property there. I mailed it to them and the USPS basically says it was delivered. I've got a tracking number that says it was delivered. I call the county. I'm like, hey, I haven't seen that it's recorded. What's going on? And they're like, well, we don't even show that it's there. They, they start walking through like all the different departments of the clerk's office. They start going everywhere. They can't figure it out. It takes them two days. They, they call me back today and they tell me they cannot find it anywhere. They said that they actually even called the local post office and asked them like, was this thing delivered? And the post office said, yes, it was delivered. Look at the tracking number. We gave it to you guys. And they're like, well, we can't find it. And we've gone to our bank records and we don't see any record of the check either. Did your check clear? I'm like, it hasn't cleared. So it's a mystery as to where this deed, which is the original deed, went. And I'm like, what are we going to do? So they proposed a solution, but I'm going to hold back what we actually agreed to. And just see, like, has anybody experienced this? Or what would you do? What would you, like, how would you solve the problem? Tate, have you had this happen to you? No, honestly. But my, my first thoughts are, even though UPS or FedEx or whoever you used said it delivered, could there have been a mistake there? Could it still be on a truck somewhere? Because get this, when we were buying stuff before the baby came, Allison ordered a stroller. And... It was supposed to deliver on, you know, on the 25th. Well, the 25th came and went and she got an email saying your stroller was delivered. Uh, We went out front, we called the UPS, it wasn't anywhere to be found. And, you know, we looked all over it. Three days had gone by, still no stroller showing up. And it wasn't until we called a friend who worked on one of the UPS trucks and he tracked it down and found it basically in California, sitting on a truck, kind of just in a pending process. So my thoughts are maybe it's still lost. Maybe the UPS guy hasn't delivered it yet. I don't know. That's weird though. It it could be right. But uh, you know, it's kind of like the, he said, she said, and here's the other thing too, is that when they track to see who signed for it, all it says is uh, left at front desk. So it's a mission. Uh, okay. All right. Well, in that case, I mean, I'd probably have to go back to square one, which is All terrible. Right. Which is what? Redo the deed, resend it, re-notarize it, start over. Start all <laughs> over again. All and right. So T- Tate's saying he's going to start through. all over. Mike, what do you got? Uh, well, can I ask a question? I know this is like a kind of like a clue search. So I, did you make a copy before you sent it for your records? I did. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I would talk that County into taking that rec- I would say the onus is all upon you. And I would be like, I'm going to get this over to you. I'm going to email it, whatever. I need you to record this. This is, this is, this is a huge, like, um, 
you know, financial burden for me now. This person isn't, may not even be available to sign anymore. Money's been paid. I'd lay the guilt on heavy. Then when they're done, I'd send them some donuts. <laughs> wow, donuts. <laughs> Except yeah. mad. Toy no. To give them pleasure. <laughs> no, donuts will be everywhere in life. I, I like that answer, Mike. I like donuts. I use guilt. I, I'm pretty, I would be like, you know, I would play it out. Like, like they're the only people in the world that could help you now is them. They're, they're it. They're the last, they're the last resort you have between losing everything and having the deal that you rightfully paid for. Yeah. Cause you know, they love to accept copies. Wow. Well, they do, they no, don't I love don't. to accept copies. No. Right. They don't love to accept but copies at all. Special, I, I don't know if they would, but I would try that angle. I would work with them. All right. I like that. Eric, what do you got? Well, I, I like how you left that detail out that you had made a copy. I yeah, assume since I <laughs> you didn't mention it, you, you didn't do that or, or scan it or something. So um, <laughs> with that in mind, I, I, I like Mike's idea. I would definitely pursue saying, well, you know, I keep a copy of everything I mail. So, you know, you guys are going to have to figure out how to work with that. Mark, what, what happened? What do you think? Well, I mean, in the past, this is why I don't pay money to my sellers until the deed's recorded, right? Um, so I have that leverage there, and I just have them, you know, re-sign, notarize, and, uh, and send me the deed again, uh, which isn't fun. That's, that's what I would typically do. Um, in the case where they, you've already paid them, Scott? No, no, no. Oh, okay, then just have them. I would just do a take, just do the deed again. Yeah. Well, what I did was I did the Mike Zeno and I basically said, Hey, I have a copy and, uh, it's, it's a color copy, you know, it's in, it's in color. So you can see that it's real. And, um, you know, I, I really don't know how to contact the seller anymore. And, you know, essentially I did what you wanted me to do, which was to overnight the, or to, to mail you the, the deed. I've got proof that it was delivered to you. It's not on anybody else's, um, you know, shoulders. You know, can I, can I send you this copy of the deed and you record it and I'll send you a check. And she said, well, we can't do that because, you know, we have to have the original. And I said, well, if I, if I was allowed to do this through simply file or electronic filing, then this would not be a problem. It would have never left my office. And she said, well, let me talk to the actual elected clerk of the court and I will call you back. And literally like two minutes later, she called me back and she said, the clerk said, absolutely. We'll accept the copy. We apologize. Wow. And Zen master Mike. <laughs> yeah. And, and Eric. And, uh, yeah. They got it right. Like they got it. You guys are starting over again. That's why I was able to do 192, 198 <laughs> deals and oh, you guys geez. did 192 last year. Because, you know, <laughs> we're like the Team Scott over here. We're all just like, you know. Well, you oh, left yeah. that out. I mean, I just figured you forgot. You got to ask questions, Tate. Well, I figured you forgot to do it. I mean, I didn't know you would, you know, we're going to make. I'm a professional, fun. man. I don't forget I to do anything. I can tell by the smirk on his face. That's what gave it away. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. Scott loves doing this. Like at boot camp when we, when we, <laughs> when we do uh, some of our modules. And, uh, you know, he always has like these really esoteric type of answers that no one gets. And he's got this smug look on his face <laughs> and he's just standing up. there <laughs> and he loves it. No one can get it. Yeah, but I love it. Mike, you I got it. it. Well, got it. I told you, he's like my big brother, Lan. He, I, I, I study him. I could see it in his face. <laughs> ne next time I'm going camera off. No, I wouldn't be able to get it. Camera off, I yeah. wouldn't have it. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, but it was kind of cool because, you know, like, but like Mike, like Mike always says, you know, like essentially you can talk to people like, and, you know, I was very, very polite about the whole thing. You know, like I, you know, um, you know, I, I kind of just, they were very apologetic. I'm like, oh no, I know things happen. You know, I just appreciate you guys working with me uh, because it really would be a pain to go back and do all this stuff. So, I mean, I just think that it's the way that you approach it, uh, you know, but you know, essentially, you know, I think if you're coming off on it and like, you know, you, you're demanding to take care of something, you probably, they probably would have been like, no way, go back and do it again. Yeah. Could you just drop the script for 30 seconds and 
policies talk and procedures me. and talk to me like a human being. Talk to me <laughs> like I'm a human being. Talk to me I like love I'm that. a human being. I love that. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot to learn from that. And, uh, you know, I learned something new for sure. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things like, don't assume anything just because I've been doing this for years. They always want the original doesn't mean that things can change. Um, and you, you know, it's for me, it's like always ask, right. And even, even, you know, renegotiating a deal, right. Sometimes we get nervous about it. What's the seller going to say? No, just what's the worst they can say is no. So you can always ask and, uh, and get out of your comfort zone in, in doing that. Uh, this is a interesting second topic. Eric Peterson, you want to tell your story? Um, sure. So on numerous occasions, um, the issue of Arizona property reports has, has come up in, in my business. Um, so in Arizona, uh, from what I understand, um, you have to record a property report if you sell more than five properties within a given subdivision um, to different sellers. So you could sell five properties to, to I'm sorry, to buyers, to, to one buyer, and, and that counts as one sale. Uh, or you could sell all five to, to different buyers and that would count as, as five sales. And then your sixth one, you would have to file a property report. And a property report is kind of a big ordeal. Um, consists of like, I think some soil tests and some different things about the environment and whatnot um, having to do with that particular subdivision. So that's kind of the, the topic to discuss here in Well, yeah, I mean, you said it right. So I hate the Arizona bulk sales law to the point where I first started, I would not buy lots in Arizona. I would only buy acreage because it was such a pain. Um, if you go through the property report, you can go through it and say, hey, there's no power. There's no water. It takes about six months. Um, it costs some money to do. And at the end of the day, it didn't seem like it made much sense. And I had friends who were actually... Uh, you know, I, I think the, uh, the Department of Real Estate went after them because they uh, were a foul of the bulk sales law in Arizona. That being said, and I, it goes beyond the scope of this podcast because they can't get legal advice. Uh, there are ways to mitigate your, your, your risk. And so today I do sell individual lots um, in Arizona. So that's all I can say um, about it. But so I would say don't be intimidated by the bulk sales law is, is my take on it. Eric, what's your take? So, um, you know, I've worked in Arizona uh, basically almost since the start. Um, and I'm, I'm yet to get to a point where I bought and sold that many properties in a given subdivision that I would have to concern myself with a uh, property report. Uh, generally, you know, I've jumped around to enough different areas, enough different counties that, that there's plenty of room to, to buy property and, and sell property without having to deal with that. However, um, I have looked at some bulk deals in the past that would have required me to to have that report. And I have done a little bit of research on it, um, talked to a title company about it and, and so on. So um, I guess what I would say is uh, it's, it would be a lot of work if I, would, if I had to create one. So I've tried to avoid it. Yeah, we did a big deal in uh, a county and actually that the, the way that we were able to do it because it was over like 200 lots uh, they, the, they already had a property report and that's why we closed it. Um, so typically if it's 25 lots or less, um, I don't really concern myself too much, but if you're going to, you know, you could get on the radar if it's like, you know, you're constantly recording deeds, we're constantly recording deeds kind of thing. Um, so it's always better to ask forgiveness sometimes than permission. 
Uh, but it is something to be aware of for sure. And if you do a huge bulk deal in Arizona on lots, you, you know, I did it in uh, Southern Arizona. I would sell six at a time um, per my attorney's request. So look, don't, don't risk it. Um, and I made money. It was fine. I could have made a lot more money if I sold them individually, but I sold, you know, in sixes. So, and it was fine. So you can do both. Um, I don't know. Mike Zana, what are your thoughts on the Arizona bulk sale law? Well, I guess just to take the other approach, stay away from it, kind of like what Eric said, there's so many subdivisions there. I mean, if you're buying <coughs> five lots, you've done pretty well, right? If anybody's picked up five lots in one subdivision, it's a pretty good job. Buy five more in another one. I mean, that's, there's so many to pick from. So if you're totally worried about this, just, I mean, if you're a person that bought five and you're buying five here and five there, you're doing very well. I don't think you're going to sweat this. So there's plenty of land out there to be had in plenty Tate, of subdivisions. Tate Litchfield, what are your thoughts? Same as uh, Mike's, you know, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's definitely something to be aware of, but I wouldn't let it deter you from working in these counties or the state of Arizona because there's some ways to work around it. And, um, you know, just, uh, I don't know. You're going to do okay. You're not going to run into a big headache. Just keep it up, I guess. I don't know. Not much to add, really. Scott Todd. I mean, I never like you and really pay attention to that stuff. I mean, like there's a, there's a lot of noise out there and I mean, I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't pay attention to the laws, but essentially, you know, you, you know, there's ways that you can run your business. Mark, when I, you know, you, you know that like uh, when I first started in real estate, I, I was trying like mobile homes or whatever. And in Florida, the law says that you can only sell, you can only sell one mobile home a year without being a dealer right? Like without being a licensed dealer and to be a dealer, you had to have like an acre of land and you had to have a building presence and then you had to have an inspection. Someone would come out and verify, like, even if I wasn't even going to sell a mobile home, like on my property, but that's kind of like the backwards thinking of the state. And um, I was talking to someone about, I'm like, what do you do? And they're like, set up another LLC, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, uh, why would I do? They're like, do you want to do deals or not? Set up an LLC, you know, for this one, for this one uh, uh, mobile home. Set up another one, and they all roll up into another. What's the problem? Just as I like to say, keep moving your feet, right? Like, just keep moving your feet, hustle, figure out ways around it, but don't just stop and say, well, I can't do the deals because I already own five in the in the same area. Uh, set up another LLC and go from there. It's not that hard. Yeah, I think you can't do that, but. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the bulk sales law is complicated. It's like this thick. I've got it in my office. Um, I've, you know, I've met attorneys about it. Um, and just, you know, I, I would say if you'll be okay, if you have 25 lots or less in an area. Is it, is there a size of it? Like if I have a, an acre or less or what? No, no. It's just in a subdivision. There's, I forgot the wow. logic of it, but it's like this really messed up logic. Um, it, I, I, you know, is it, is, crazy. It, is it if I own more than five or if I sell more than five? It's if you sell, sell more than five oh. to one buyer. Oh, to one buyer. Yeah. You, oh. yeah you, so if you have 25 or, 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 or more in the subdivision, you can't sell them in ones. You have to sell them in sixes. Got it. Got it. So... <laughs> It's, 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 a, it's an interesting law, but again, like we said, don't lose sleep over it. Um, worst case, you know, you pay a little fine and you go on. Um, but to, to follow up on that though, if there is an existing property report um, it is for that in. subdivision, then you can reference that or re-record it or what do you do? Yeah, you reference it. Okay. Yeah. It's, and it's already in, it's already in the file. So it just, it stay that property report stays with that property. Um, okay. What you have to do is you have to notify every buyer and, and have them sign off on the property report. Right. So it's a whole thing. Uh, let's talk to about a, a more positive subject next week, fellas, boot camp. Who's coming to boot camp? I'll be there. Everyone's going to be there? I'll be there. Yeah. We're all going to be there. We're so, there. Uh, Eric, is, how many Orlando boot camps will this be for you? 
This will be the third. Yeah. I mean, for you, what, what is it about boot camp for you that, you know, you keep coming back? Uh, at this point for me, uh, I think it's just about connections and, and community, um, you know, kind of in the land world, if you will. Um, you know, I, certainly there's something to be learned every time I go though. Um, but I think those connections are, are pretty valuable at this point too. So. Yeah, ab- absolutely. Zen master Mike, how about you? I know you're going to Disney world. Yes. Um, why do I, you know, this kind of lines up with someone asked me the other day on a call, uh, you know, Hey, why do you, why do you coach? Right. And I'm like, it's the same reason I go to boot camps. I surround myself with successful people by coaching. I'm always around people in the business by going to the boot camps. I'm around people in the business. Hope you can't hear those sirens flying by. My dogs are hollering and the sirens are going. Is that loud? Can you hear that? No, that's okay. (laughs) Sorry. You surround yourself by successful people and it just, it comes off and helps you and helps it makes you grow. So when you go to these places, and you know what? There's people of all types of success there as well. There's, we have such a variety of people that come to our boot camps. We have very intelligent people, and it's just a great group of uh, just gathering of different minds all for one purpose, to better themselves at land investing. So it, it's awesome. I, I would not not want to be there. I would, well, that doesn't sound right. That's a double negative. But anyway, I have to be there. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember John Bowen from Equity Trust, and he does like 200 of these for Equity Trust. And he came and he said, Mark, he's like, I do these every week. It's like you have by far the smartest room I've ever been to. And uh, it's true. Like we just have really uh, smart, ambitious, cool people that come to boot camp. And yeah, I mean, everyone says the same thing who's been to other like real estate kind of seminars are like, it's always small. It's always intimate, um, but it's always quality. Um, not hardly any fluff over the two and a half days. Uh, not a lot of rah rah, not a lot of motivation, um, just you know, a lot of teaching. Um, and everyone tells me like, when they leave boot camp, all the land investing clouds dissipate and everything becomes clear. So, um, and and for me, like I just I just love it. It's like it's almost going like a family reunion. Uh, Nine keeps coming, and Mimi keeps coming, and the Archibalds. Um, you know, uh, Tom Willis has been to like eleven of them. I mean, it's it's amazing, and so. Uh, and then we get to haze Scott about which restaurant he picks. So it's always awesome. Listen, I, I have a proven track record in Orlando for restaurants. So, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, because I'm only it's, hazing Scott because I know he went to Panera for lunch today. Tate, let's look, what, what, what? I'll vouch for you. Hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. 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 Hold on. Hold on. It's not like, let's see, in Scott's day when we went with like, okay, where are we going to go for dinner, Mark? Oh, we're going to go to the hotel restaurant. Oh, no, no, no. I take us outside of that. <laughs> I'll vouch for you, Scott, on this one. Uh, how, See, by, by the way, that, that hotel restaurant was really good. It was good. Was it, was it not? It was very it was. good. But what's wrong with Panera? I missed this whole thing. <laughs> There's nothing exactly, wrong with Panera. Mike. What's wrong I mean, with what's, Panera Bread? What's, what's wrong with Subway? Missed- there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's come on. You know, well, my, my, my take is like, I don't know when I'm going to die. <laughs> and so every meal for me is like, could this be my last meal? I certainly don't want to say like, it was Panera. <laughs> well, you won't because you won't be around. Your family would have to say, well, his last, <laughs> yeah, last like, oh, yeah. meal was Panera. It's how we would have wanted it. But like, I, I could just it. imagine myself like, like those last few thoughts as I'm dying. I can't believe I had a turkey sandwich. It was sandwich. Panera. A Panera. <laughs> Today's podcast is not sponsored by Panera Bread. I know. <laughs> I'm going to get like a cease and desist letter. Stop libeling our, <laughs> our company. Tay <laughs> Litchfield, what do you love about boot camp? Um, well, I love that every time I go, I come away with a new tidbit or a new approach to doing this business. Um, so I consider that to be a huge benefit. I also love the community. Like just going and surrounding myself with with people who are motivated, um, it helps me stay focused and it helps me stay motivated. Every time I leave boot camp, the week or two afterwards, it's like all hands on deck. I mean, I am fired up and ready to go. So for me, it's it's kind of like a recharge too. I go in and just do nothing but talk land for three days, and I leave and I'm I'm fired up and ready to go. So I don't know. It's it's just fun too. It, it it's great. It's great. Scott Todd, this is you're you're like, how many how many have we done? I don't I don't know. 
I don't know how many we've done, Mark. Countless. Six, 16? 15? 16, I don't know. 14? I don't know. I, I don't even know. We have to go back and like count them. Like it's too much. I, I think we started in 2014. So my first one was in, t- yeah, because you, you started them in, t- you started in Vegas in 2014. Right. And then you had, so you had one in Vegas, you had one in Scottsdale, 2000. So you did two in 2014, right? Right. And then my first one was in Scottsdale in uh, 2015 in February. And that year we did three of them. Okay. So it was three, seven, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13. This is like number 13, 13 maybe. Yeah. Something like that. And they're getting better and better. I think so. Yeah. So the one I went to way back in the day, it was like, geez, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I know. It, it, you know, it, and it's become more, more interactive. I don't think you had any interaction, Scott. It was just me kind of like, uh, having you guys drink from a fire hose of information. And now it's like way more interactive. It, it was good. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my ego's fragile. So I'm glad you're saying that. <laughs> uh, glad to help you out. You know, I don't believe that. No, it's, Panera Bread. Thing, Panera Bread says it all is good too, Mike. It's good. It's good. I know Mike. Mike's like I don't. I don't. I don't believe that at all. <laughs> so, um, well, I thought this was a great podcast. I mean, this that's an interesting segue to end. I mean, it, we just it's it's like we just petered out here. Right? I know it's like, like it's, it's like fragile like, ego, and that's a great podcast. It's, it's uh, great roundtable. It is there a, down a little bit? Yeah, the energy just dropped. Yeah. We gotta get it up. We it's get okay because so, it's that time of the week. It's that time. What's oh, our first. tip of the week? Tate Litchfield, bring up the energy. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, all right. I see what I can do here. So, this one is. It's a good tip. I think it's just more of like a an everyday life tip. But there's a website called Unroll.me. And oh, I love Unroll.me. Great tip. Yeah, this website's, I found it uh, actually this morning and I was getting all of this junk email. And so I looked up for uh, like an unsubscribe website where I could get off all of these mailing websites or all these automated uh, emails and came across this Unroll.me and it is fantastic. I just dropped it in the chat bar for everybody to look at. Um, Give it a shot. Basically, you enter your Gmail account or whatever account you have, and this website will pull up all of the websites that you're subscribed to, and you can just go down the list and click like unsubscribe, 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 and you're done. It's one stop, easy as that. So check it out. It's awesome. Just don't unsubscribe from anything yeah. Land Geek. Um, yeah. <laughs> I was going to preface with that. That's a, that's a good tip. I love Unroll.me. Uh, the Zen Master, Mike Zeno, what's your tip of the week? First of all, I love that one. Just you know, using that. That's an awesome tip. That's that's a very good site because you don't even know what you subscribe to, right? It's like no. you subscribe, subscribe, and all of a sudden you just you have no clue until you do that. You're like, oh my god, I subscribe to all these things. Yeah, it's pretty. I, when I logged in, it was like, whoa, wh- how did you guys get my email address? Where is <laughs> yeah. <this> coming from? <laughs> um, I do have a quote, but I you know, like I said. Uh, I talk to a lot of people, as we know, and, and everybody, the uh, one question I ask, no pressure on them. I say, what do you guys think of the podcast? Love them. My tip of the week, love it. Love it. Do not stop the quotes. So I can't stop. But Scott, that's what they say. I, I ask them, no pressure, and they say that. So that's true. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my own poll, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> so this week's <laughs> quote uh, is – this is going to relate. Maybe, you know, at first they always don't seem like to do, but they do. Silence isn't empty. It's full of answers. Now think about this. I know everybody listening to this podcast, if they're in this land business, right? There are times you get involved in, in, in one task where you just start digging in and it's not working, or maybe you're having a hard time posting or you're having a hard time getting a mailing out, whatever it is. And it just starts to, you know, eat at your brain. And then all of a sudden you just get in this weird loop and it's just not going to get any better. You have to step away. And what I like to think about now too, and everybody that works with us gets this bug about systems. It's like you step away, get a cup of coffee, get some quiet time, and then just think about what's going on as you start to relax away from that scenario. And you can think about you're focusing on a task, but how would fit bigger into a system? And that only comes about when you take that break in that space, because I know everybody that's listening has definitely been in that funk where they're just sitting there and it's like, 
your mind just starts to turn in on itself because you're having an issue, whether, like I said, it's on the mailing or the marketing or any other aspect of the business. And what you really need to do is cultivate the ability to actually, because it's hard, right? It's so hard to step away because you're like, no, I'm going to get this. And then and it just digs you in deeper and deeper and deeper. So silence isn't empty. It's full of answers. Make that space, create that space, and allow you know the answer to come to you that you're looking for. Don't just keep drilling you know, on any aspect of our business. I love it. I love it. I, you know, I was just reading a, a quote and somebody said, you know, don't force it. Yeah. And I think it kind of comes to like, you know, just don't force it. Um, I don't know why I said that, but it made me think of that. It, was, it relates well. It does relate well. Like if, if, I mean, part of me thinks like, well, you should embrace the suck and you should be outside your comfort zone. But um, forcing it seems like you're you have like, to know how like too long, tight. How long you embrace the suck. Don't embrace yeah. it too long. Right. It's going to exactly. be a time. Don't do it for 24 hours. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> On one thing, you know, it's like, okay, take a break. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Eric, getmagic.com, Peterson. No more job, not, huh? Jeez. No, no. Oh, he, he graduated from that. Ah, Luke Skywalker. Yeah. Luke Skywalker. What's your tip so, of the week? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think uh, mine today is uh, not really land related so much. Um, it's a Facebook bot, I guess it is. It's called um, Ask Trim. Oh. And uh, it's asktrim.com. And uh, basically what it is, is it's a, a way to automate um, opportunities to save money. So you sign up uh, to this Facebook bot. It starts sending you all these messages. You add your credit cards and different things like that. And it starts to show you where, where you can save money um, that you're already spending. So, you know, if your debit card or credit card has options for, you know, maybe cash back on groceries or I don't know, whatever it might be, this bot's going to tell you about it. And all you got to do is say, you know, accept that you want to do that. And then it's going to add that. And then you start to get notifications saying, you saved a dollar today or $10 or whatever it is. And they'll renegotiate your Comcast bill and all sorts of stuff. So um, kind of just a neat little thing to look at for some, some ways to maybe just trim some extra dollars off your, your regular expenses. I love it. Now I'm using truebill.com, which does sort of the same thing. Um, it's free. Yours is free. I just feel like true bill has been around longer and therefore better. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, cause so, everything that's been around longer is better. Well, I mean, I feel, I feel like, you know, it's, it's got like, you know, more securities like bank level security. Let me see. Ask trim if there's any security. Yeah. They're yeah, not really got, talking about security here. They have six bit. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Yeah. They have. Oh, no, it's a, never, never mind. It's, we stuff, take secure yeah. your security very seriously. And then it's like, like I got like that funny emoji, like, ha ha, not really. No, I'm just going. Now I'm conflicted. I was just going to yeah. say Trim, now True Bill. Now I don't know what to do. Now I'm conflicted. I, I just, don't, yeah. just don't do anything, Mike. Just yeah. in action. <laughs> in action, right. Just don't do it. All. Yeah. Don't save money. Don't cancel subscriptions at all. Jeez. I don't know which Take one. Take some now. silence and think about it for a while. <laughs> all right. So uh, Eric Peterson, very average tip of the week. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I, so Mark likes the uh, iPhone one better than the iPhone ten because it's been yeah because it's been longer. a long yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely true. yeah don't don't say iPhone ten up. unless you can get me one by the way <laughs> so I'm gonna have fancy wait a month hands, by the way uh, at twelve oh one buy it for me so I'm gonna I'm gonna automate it M Mark Mark was uh, all excited that he had the um, iOS update fifteen minutes before I did. It was the best 15 and, minutes of my life. But here's, here's the greatest thing, though, is, is I'm going to order my iPhone the same time as Mark, and I'm sure they will arrive on the same day, but I will get mine first because I'm on the East Coast. And Ooh. I'll tell you how it is, Mark. Oh, that's, that hurts. <laughs> well, that was so fun for me, Scott, just <laughs> playing with iOS 11 while you had to... 15 uh, minutes. What's 15, 15 minutes? minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I like, I'm going to put that up there with like the birth of my children, um, you know, getting married, like just these, these memorable moments in my life. 15 minutes ahead of Scott. 15 minutes ahead of Scott. So Scott, what, what's your tip of the week? All right, Mark. I want 
it's actually two tips of the week, but we're going to combine it into one is I want everybody listening to one be a quitter. What does that mean? I want you to go look at this book, quitter, go to Amazon, quitter, closing the gap between your day job and your dream job. Oh, and, and you know, basically it's the story of John who is the author of the book. And basically, you know, he, he had this dream, um, that basically was different than, than where his job, his day job had taken him. So, you know, essentially it's his story of how he kind of embraced the world of being a quitter. I mean, I guess I can say I'm a quitter. You're a quitter, Mark. Uh, quitter. You know, we, we kind of have quit the, the, the normal way of thinking and um, it's kind of his, his piece. And then I want you to also look at by the same author, the book, entitled finish give yourself the gift of done you know i'm i'm a big believer that done beats perfect and i think that um a lot of people they they're easy to start things you know it's it's fun to start new projects it's fun to to start a new business you know it's it's fun to do all of these things but at the end of the day it's not necessarily about what you start it's about what you finish and it doesn't have to be perfect it's really about getting it done so that you can refine it and make it better and uh, a lot of people, they, they wait for that perfect, uh, that perfect to come, you know, the, they wait till they can make the perfect cake or they make wait till they, I mean, you've heard people say, well, you know, we're just not going to get married right now. It's not a perfect time. Well, there's no perfect time to get married. It's just the way that it is. Right. So, you know, check out the word, the, the book quitter and check out the book finish. All right. Great. Great tips of the week. Um, my tip of the week is check out the site. It's Bartar. I mean, there's no way that Zaino is going to be able to pronounce this. Bartar.com. Bata. Mike, bata. It's bata. bata. So <laughs> I remember when I first started in land, um, I didn't want to pay for like haircuts and I didn't want to pay for like the dentist. And so I would barter with them. I'd say, look, I've got a half acre parcel in New Mexico. Um, you, you know, do you want it? And just for the year, give me you know, free dentistry. Um, and they're like, Oh, okay. Like it was just kind of fun. Um, let's kind of see like, can I get away with not paying for any services? So, um, you know, maybe when you're first starting, um, you just want to barter, right? Maybe you, you're, you're more comfortable selling like a car over the raw land. So you barter the raw land for a car and then you sell the car. I don't know. It's just an idea. It's another marketing, uh, avenue. You could just, you know, what you could do is you could actually just advertise your land on barter and then say, Hey, you know, I, you don't have anything I'm interested in bartering, but you can, I can do it on easy payments. You want to do that? And boom, you've got a sale. I just dropped the mic on you, Eric Peterson. <laughs> now I do have a second tip of the week. If you need some morning motivation, this is from Mike Zano. So I'm going to give him credit. I've been listening to this. <laughs> Can what is that? What is it? <laughs> Only the best song ever. I was a highway man. <laughs> oh, lordy. Oh. And this is this is the end of the podcast. Like this is today. Like this is how we have to shut it down for good. This is the end. It is impossible to be in a bad mood after listening to Highway this Man. This is how I end my day every day. I listen to that whole album, that entire Willie album. Nelson, Johnny Cash. Waylon Jennings, right? Waylon Jennings. Mm -hmm. I end my day to this whole album. I work out to it every day. This is why I'm so happy. Look at me. You got to listen to the album, Scott. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to buy you the CD. The CD. I, I walk the line. The eight track. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm guys, I, I thought this was a great uh, round table. It didn't, didn't evolve too quickly. Until the end. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, I, Mark, I don't know that we can ever continue this podcast after that song, like, makes this debut. Yeah, Scott, you haven't even listened to the song yet. Give it a chance. I, I'm going to box the song to him. I'm going to get it to him. He'll have uh, it to me. Look, Tate you, you're and You were making Eric fun of me I, about Hamilton initially, and now you love Hamilton. Listen, Tate, Tate, Eric, and I are just, like, in shock. These two guys were speechless. Eric can't even stop laughing. It's so Eric's bad. in Tennessee. He loves this stuff. Yeah. He doesn't love this song. He's a cowboy 1980. Listen, 1980s is calling. They want their song back. 
<laughs> Ooh. All right. Tate's like, you know, if it's not rap, he doesn't listen to it. I don't even know what to say at this point. I'm just like, uh, you'll be getting the, you'll be getting a copy tonight too. Don't worry. Let, no, let me tell you what Tate. Let me tell you what Tate's saying. Tate's saying, "Who's Willie Nelson?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boy, talk about dating ourselves. Uh, <laughs> um, well, Mike, I will listen to this with you. This is the song next Eric's week in when, he, when he goes to Colorado with a backpack full of cash. He's going to have this on his earphones. <laughs> Okay, not the airport. He's gonna be grooving to it with a backpack full of cash. <laughs> backpack, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna listen to the whole album on the way to that, Orlando. Feel the love, Mike. Is that is that is his backpack full of cash from Colorado from that big deal he just closed? Time to end. Oh, see what oh. I did there, Eric. Ouch! <laughs> that really hurt. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't even know there was a deeper part. I didn't know that it went deeper than. And I, I'm sorry. Well, I, well, I, I want to I want to thank the listeners for putting up with our shenanigans, and uh, you know, remind them that the podcast is sponsored by Landmoto.com. Start listing your 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 land there, and uh, also, if you want to go to the next boot camp in San Antonio in January, go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp. Uh, we can start registering you now. Uh, in fact, all of 2018 has been booked. So go to landgeek.com forward slash boot camp and pick your your venue. We got San Antonio, we got Vegas, we got Scottsdale, and of course, for you East Coasters, we throw you a bone and we go to Orlando. Um, oh, guys, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. We're good. Also, you know, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review. Support at thelanky.com. It's the only way Eric Peterson will keep showing up, and um, we'll send you for free the ninety-seven dollar passive income launch kit. Scott, are you going to lead us in? Ready? Let's go. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. So, Scott, Friday night, where are we going? And Saturday night, where are we going? Scott, oh, well, we, we, can't talk about, we, we, we can't talk about this while recording. Like, we, we're going to have everybody going with us. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, you right. can't. I mean, like, yeah, I'm, to to I'm so exhausted from, from now. From they're gonna Friday. hear they're not invited. <laughs> well, they're not. It's not that yeah, they're not invited. Just, <laughs> it's just, it's like, like they're all bread. exhausted. I know. If I mean, they, Mark, yeah, if, if, if they're, we're if they're capable of going to dinner, Panera. if they're capable of going to dinner, then we have not, like, you know, exhausted them. Like, enough. exhausted yes. them enough. We need to do more. We got to do like what Tony Robbins does, like a 12-hour day. Yeah, fourteen hour day. We pretty much yeah. do, though. No, we do. We do go long, <laughs> for sure. I mean, realistically, it starts every day at eight. Because if you're missing out on those bonus modules, then you know you're missing out on some of like the best kept secrets. Then we don't end till five. Yeah, please, Danielle, time. if you're watching, if you're listening to this, please edit out the bonus sessions because we like to make it a secret. Oh yeah, since Tate. Yes. Just- Thanks, Tate. You just you know. gave it everything. And edit out that nobody's invited to go out to eat. Yeah, yeah, edit that right. out too. <laughs> yeah. But you can meet us at Panera. Very, yeah. We'll meet you at Panera. Don't edit out Willie Nelson. Though. I, there I there is like a it. Panera bread. <laughs> there is a Panera bread right up the street from the hotel, Mark. That's a good idea. Yeah, but if, if they're not serving the bang bang shrimp, I'm not going. Mm. It's all about the bang Maybe bang. Maybe that's what we do. Maybe we give people clues based on the menu. And if they can figure out, <laughs> decipher the clue, then they can meet us. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if they know Scott and they've been listening to it, they're like, "Where's where's the steak place? Where's the where's the steak and potatoes place?" What you know, Scott won't eat Indian. What he accent eat- is that? Like, what? <laughs> that's what ridiculous. That's, that? that's the. Uh, I've heard French. I've heard New England. I don't know that one. That's his Scott accent. That's the the Scott. That's Florida. That's the Scott oh. Tampa accent. Hey, I like steak. <laughs> I'm Man, uh, it, that sounds like Marty Moose. More than anything. <laughs> that was good. Right. Hey, welcome to boot camp. <laughs> Sorry, boot camp is closed. Who's Sorry, boot, boot, boot camp is closed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Marty Moose, Marty Moose. See, this right. is like what happens movie. after the movies when they have the credits and then there's some bonus material. This is what this is right now. This is the bonus, the bonus material. I don't think anybody movie. listens because nobody ever comments about this. I think they cut it off, actually. You can ask a, smart. a question at boot camp about it. Yeah, and they get a ticket if they know what you're going to say right now, Mark. 
There, yeah, exactly. So what's the exactly. question? Marty uh, Moose. Okay. Marty Moose. Yeah. What, what, what on the last round table podcast, Who's what it? fictional yeah. character did we reference? Good, good. Marty good. Moose. Good. Marty Moose. Yeah. All right, guys. I'm going to go eat uh, <laughs> some Panera. Awesome. And listen to Highway Man. Tonight, Highway Man. Right before that bottle I, of wine, Highway Man. Highway Man. I, might start, I might start opening every uh, flight to go with Highway Man. <laughs> yes. Not bad. By the way, uh, okay. guys, tomorrow, Scott's soloing uh, his air, his, his uh, plane. His plane. Wow. So, yeah. Fly, flying awesome. solo tomorrow. Flying solo. Wait till after boot camp, Scott? Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I got it. He's I good. Got He's it, got it. He's got it. I got it for sure. <laughs> only, only thing is, the only thing is like the landing. And how hard is that? Okay. <laughs> That's coming down anyway. Right? It's it coming down hard. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. All right. We got to talk about the paramotor gliding thing. Yeah. I've got the bug. Yeah. I'll have to sneak you in there. Yeah. All, all right, right, guys. guys. Talk to you Thanks. later. Talk to you later. Bye.